It's Tuesday, October 24, 2023. And it's a cool one this morning. Uh, I thought it was gonna freeze last night, it was the forecast anyway. And uh, my weather station says it, it got down to zero. So it was right around that point and it's chilly right now. There's a little breeze coming from kind of the Northeast it seems. <clears throat> and uh, left the house, it's the weather station said 3C. Uh, so it's cool and you can tell I'm not only in long pants, but I've broken out the jacket. I have a little job I need to do here and uh, today it's not very warm, but it's a, a nice sunny day and it's not raining and it's not snowing. So I need to do this job today. Uh, plus the fact that it's time. The timing is that it's time. I had, if you recall, uh, early September, I had installed um, Apivar strips in all of my colonies and it's time for that to come out. It's a bad deal to leave that in too long. Uh, it's a really bad deal to leave it in all winter. Although I would like to, but my conscience won't let me do that. So now I've got jars and pails on everything. So I need to take the jar or the pail off, open the lid and grab the ape of our strips or strip. These little nukes will just have one strip in them and uh, make sure I collect that in a in a container. You don't want to leave that stuff lying around the apiary. That's a bad deal. Uh, and then uh, button them up again. And that'll be the last time. Uh, so I'll, I'll, be, uh, I'll be assessing these colonies uh, as well <clears throat> at that time. And, uh, you know, I'll be straight with you again here uh, today. These colonies don't look good. The big ones don't look good. Uh, and, and some of these are kind of rough too. Uh, my increase over here looks just fine. And the, the colonies at the out yard look just fine too. But, but these big uh, production colonies here, uh, they have, uh, they've been the victim of high mite loads uh, due to a combination of uh, apparent amitraz resistance. Uh, and, and it's not just my assessment, that's been a, a, the determination of the lab. And also my failure to post-test my bees after mite treatment. That's caught me before and it's caught me again. So probably a third of these are the walking dead, if not dead. There's a couple of them with the lids upside down and you know that's not a good sign. And uh, some of the rest, I don't know. I'll be, I'll be just doing that assessment when I take the strips out. None of them look really fantastic. And so I don't hold up much hope for them for the winter, uh, which is unfortunate, but there is bubkis I'm doing about that now. That is uh, water under the bridge. So we'll take the strips out. Um, I'm probably gonna leave the pails on for a while. Uh, next week, it looks it looks like it's a little, you know, kind of decent uh, during the week. So maybe I'll take the pails off then. We're said to get a snowstorm or at least get some snow this week. I think starting tomorrow, Wednesday. But we usually do. And that doesn't bother me much. Um, I can move in, you know, snow or no snow. It doesn't really matter. So we're coming right down to it. The big push is always the honey house. Um, I'm, I'm never quite ready with the honey house. I have to get the honey house ready for the bees to come in and I'm just never quite ready to lose that building. Uh, it's, it's difficult. Winter storage is always very difficult and I'm not prepared for that. Enough talk, start pulling some strips. I'm gonna use the pliers method. That's uh, nice and fast. You just grab that strip with the pliers and yank it up and throw it in a box. I'm stalling because I, I don't want the bees to beat me up there. They sometimes can get pretty cranky on a day like today. So, but I'll get at it and I'll, I'll show you if there's anything interesting. Uh, otherwise, there's, there's really nothing interesting in this job. It's just doing the same thing 150 times. Uh, so, well, get at it. 
Well, I got the Apovar out and uh, I really wasn't happy with what I saw under those lids. But we'll talk about that again later on. I have a, a task I need to do here. It's a little bit of a logistical conundrum. You see, I need to take this trailer uh, to Winnipeg and hopefully tomorrow I have a skid of freight that I need to deliver there, but I also have two lift of plywood I need to bring home and uh, they won't fit on the 14 foot trailer. Of course, two eight foot lifts is 16 feet. That trailer is only 14. This one's 20, so I need to use this one, but I've got a syrup tank on here, which has a considerable amount of syrup in it. And there's no way I can lift that with my tractor. So the only thing I think I can do is if I can skid it, um, if I can get this trailer right nice and close to that black trailer and uh, then use my straps to skid that tank along. Once it hits the black trailer, it'll be good because it's a steel deck and things slide better on there. Uh, the wooden deck will be a little bit of a challenge. Uh, but the first order of business is to get this tank, get this uh, pump off of here. And this is all caused by uh, losing that tank of syrup uh, to that broken fitting because this tank was on the black trailer. I had that arranged, but then I had to quickly change my plan. Okay, this is always going to be a mess. Syrup all over that. I'm just going to take it off. And this is always a little bit of a problem because there's always a lot of syrup in this hose. And when I take this off, I can't, uh, there's no, no valve on it. I did buy a valve, I just haven't put it on there. So. Now this will lose a lot of syrup too. Well, there's no way around that, is there? Well, I'm sorry, but the old man in me didn't press record. That was a bit of doing, but it worked exactly to plan. Uh, I was saying that getting these two trailers that close without causing damage is, you know, a little tricky, but don't need to be uh, touching because, the, you know, the tank will cantilever over the side before it tips. And, and so a few inches of space there is fine. So. You know, obviously I've got some syrup to clean up now and uh, then I can get this trailer ready to go, go to the city tomorrow. It's Thursday, January the 25th. It's not January either, it's October. And guess what? Back into this white stuff. 
and I'm only saying stuff because I'm trying to be uh, um, gentle with my language. So here we have what I did yesterday. I went to Winnipeg yesterday and picked up a couple of lifts of this plywood. I got a special deal on this plywood and I'm just looking at it and I'm hoping that it is good enough. There's a lot of voids in this stuff so I might have to cut around some things but regardless I'll worry about that another day. Um, one of my problems is now that hey look what Carrie taught me. Carrie taught me how to keep these ends. I learned from Ian's video a while ago how to wrap up the ends so they don't don't stream down the road. Um, and then when Carrie was here, she taught me how to put the end in inside this loop and, and hold it nice and tight. Look how beautiful, like a bunch of little bow ties. And they stay tight. And it's awesome. Thanks, Carrie. Uh, so what was I saying? So now I have a problem here because my trailer's tied up because I can't lift these off. <laughs> I don't know if my neighbor maybe has a machine can come over, but uh, this may be the end of my trailer until I use up this plywood or get the uh, courage to hand bomb it off, which certainly at this point I don't have that kind of courage. Um, yeah, I'm just looking at this stuff. Yeah, I'm not sure. I have to get my measuring tape out. Uh, I think he sold me five eighths. <clears throat> They're supposed to be three quarter. I'll have to measure that. We'll see. Because I only see four laminations there. So uh, it's kind of, uh, I don't know, it's supposed to be three quarter. Maybe it is, I have to measure it. So regardless, that's that was my Wednesday. Going to Winnipeg to get this. Everything worked just fine. It was a good day. The trailer performed well. I didn't have any tire blowouts or anything like that. And it's pretty heavy load. I I bet you this is eight thousand pounds, maybe between six and eight thousand pound uh, payload. Uh, you know, and then the trailer. So uh, I don't know how much payload this trailer will carry because I don't know what the trailer weighs. But I bet you the trailers. 4,000 pounds or more. Uh, it's 15,000 gross. So that means, you know, once you get to 10,000 pounds, you're maxing out. Anyway, enough of that talk. I got to work in the snow today. And I've worn my shoes, and that's a mistake because my feet are going to get wet and cold. I meant to wear my boots, but we'll go and see what's going on and then maybe have to go in and change. Um, but I need to get some gloves out of the truck because it's chilly out here. It's zero right now. It's uh, it's not warm. Fortunately, it's not super windy. A little breeze from the north, which is always cold, north wind. Uh, today in the apiary, what I need to do is uh, I, I, I moved around some hives uh, yesterday when I got home, uh, put them closer together so I could consolidate my pallets easier. I'll talk about that when we get in the apiary. So, I'm going to grab my gloves and we'll run over there and get some work done. This is what we're looking at in the apiary. Uh, so as I mentioned yesterday, um, I, I picked up all the hives from these two rows and put them over here. And then I actually took the nuke row as well, put them over here, uh, the third row as well. So just move them closer together, a lot less walking. And uh, if I need to consolidate pallets, there's uh, less, you know, carrying hives from one to another. And another uh, reason I wanted to do that is uh, you can see here, this is the hive stands that I had in these first two rows. <clears throat> now I always, that always takes a little bit of planning because uh, as I move my bees in and set the, set the hives down, I can't have all the stands lined up because I can't drive over them. Uh, so I have to put the stand in, put two hives on, put another stand down, put two hives on when I move in in the spring. <clears throat> in the fall or early winter, as this is, I don't want the hive stands to freeze to the ground. 
because then when I go to pick up the bees, I have to do the opposite thing, pick up the two hives off the stand, then I have to move the stand so that I can get the tractor to the next two. Um, so I was just here yesterday after I got back from the city and I thought, you know what, I'm going to move those hives over here for the reasons explained and get the, get the stands off the ground so they don't freeze down. Now they're sitting on a couple of chaps over here so I can move them around. Uh, which they'll sit uh, to the position they'll sit in for the winter. Boy, there's a lot of cleanup to do here. There's stuff everywhere. There's just stuff everywhere. I, I don't think I've been so ill prepared for winter in my beekeeping career, which is about nine years, I guess. Uh, because today, guess what I have to do today? I have to take all these pails off. I have to take pails off, I have to take jars off. And that's the easy part take them off, put the plugs in, uh, but the, they're mostly full of syrup parts still. And uh, you know, this whole story of, of fixing syrup and then dump it on the ground and then drive to Ian's to get a tank of syrup and then feed all the bees. That's just a best effort scenario because it didn't seem to work out very well. Um, I don't think the bees have taken much syrup since I did all that. Uh, so I really want to maximize what's going on. And uh, so I'm going to try to pour that syrup back in the tank and I might have to go to town, put a little more investment into that tank and dump some pro health in it just so that that syrup lasts till spring. Then I can feed it. I can feed it in the spring. It can sit here. It can sit here all winter. It won't go bad with pro health in it. I know that for sure. I have experience with that. So that is the deal. And also, also, I need to, to uh, I did some assessments when I took the Apovar out and I need to decide what I'm going to do with that. Uh, there's a lot of colonies here. They're no good. There are none here that, that I would say are spectacular. There's maybe one or two. And I'm thinking that those two are my, my next year's queen breeders <laughs> because if they, if they survived a, a big mite load uh, season, then maybe those are my hygienic bees, who knows? So anyway, uh, I want to put uh, a lot, I counted up the, the hives over on this side that I have on the, the single bottom boards, the six framers, and I counted up those and I counted up the pallet space that I have, my three-way three pallets. I've got almost enough pallet space for all of those hives. So I'm going to try to consolidate those as well that'll make moving into the building so much easier it'll make the space they use up in the building so much less um, because otherwise I'll get six of them on a chap and a chap is 40 inches wide while my two-way pallets uh, 33 and a half inches wide so I'm <clears throat> six and a half inches uh, per row of six or uh, row of three uh, in the building and, and that really adds up when you get a couple of those in there. Yeah, so I gotta get to work here. This, this is not gonna be any fun at all. I'm gonna start by taking the pails off, put them on the pallets, put the feed plugs back in the hives, get those pallets all decked up with the pails, and then maybe not today, maybe tomorrow, not tomorrow. I gotta go to Winnipeg again tomorrow. Uh, deliveries and packing honey and stuff. I couldn't do that yesterday because of the, the rig I was driving. I just couldn't, you know, you, it's not a sports car. You can't just tool around the city in that. So it was just in the city and back. Uh, so it could be the weekend. Maybe I'll get up here on the trailer and try to dump those pails back in there. Um, I'm not sure how that's going to work. I might end up having to put the pails in the honey house for a night, let them warm up. Uh, so that I can dump them out. So I'm going to stop talking about this and actually do it. Well, I got the pails picked up and uh, some of them on the pallets. I did a couple of consolidations here 
I'm going to go in and warm up and get a bowl of soup and come back and do some consolidations. Um, got all the pails and jars off over here. I have consolidations to do there. And uh, there's, a, there's a pail you can see here. And that, that cluster was right up under the pail. There was actually two or three of them. They were right up under the pail. Uh, taking the syrup, so I decided, you know what, you can have it if you want to take that syrup, you can have it. I also noticed you can see the polynukes way over here, and uh, I always say that I have a love hate with those things. I love that I have them because I don't have enough six frame equipment. Um, I love what I paid for them. Um, I love another thing about them I love that the bees do very well in them, but I hate that as well because. I'm trying to get away and go into getting a wooden equipment and I feel like maybe I'm shooting myself in the foot, but I don't like managing the polys. I do not like them at all uh, management wise. So just uh, put that you know feather in your cap, those polystyrene hives, in my opinion, the bees do well in them. Some of the best colonies I've had are in polystyrene hives. So anyway, I'm gonna go in for bowl soup. I gotta change my shoes are wet, so I have to change in my boots and uh, warm up a bit and come back and continue working out here. Well, I've had that bowl of soup, warmed me up a little bit. Uh, got dry gloves, dry socks, changed my shoes out for my boots. Uh, so now I'm back to do some consolidations here. I got a number of pallets here, we got one hive, so those all have to be uh, consolidated so that at the very worst I'll have one pallet with one hive but I don't know if I have an even number here uh, or not. As you can see I've been moving things around my apiary here a lot today and I, I hear a lot of conversation about moving bees short distances. We've all heard the old adage two feet or two miles and you know there's some truth to that. There is truth to that. However um, there's another principle that can be used uh, in, in certain circumstances in order to move your bees. If, if I want to move bees from one location to another in my apiary, say 100 feet or 50 feet, we all know that the foragers will, you know, go back to where they were at the, in the beginning. Um, well, believe it or not, there's bees in these boxes and we don't see any bees out. We don't see any bees flying. So this is why I can get away with this. And uh, now I'm, I'm at the beginning of a long winter, but even if I weren't, if, if these bees, in my experience, if these bees have not flown today or will not fly today, so I can predict in the morning, I can see the weather forecast and I can see, wow, it's only gonna be two to three C today. Well, the bees aren't gonna fly in that. So then I can take those hives, I can put them wherever I want, and the bees are gonna be fine. Um, you know, you, rainy weather, you can do the same, so who wants to work in the rain? <laughs> and in my experience, they will move successfully if they're not flying for that one day, meaning they fly the day before, up until whatever time, you know, six o'clock or eight o'clock or whatever, they go to bed at night, then they don't fly all night. And if they don't fly the next day and the next night, then they'll, they'll forget where they live, uh, like two days ago. So I use that principle in the summer. When I'm making nukes, uh, I make splits. I want to place them in my apiary, but I don't want everybody to fly back. So I'll make up that split. I'll make it in a box, either my four frame boxes uh, or my pro nukes so that I have a little door that I can close. Uh, my six framers, I don't have that option really. I mean, I could, but it's much more difficult. Uh, my 10 framer, same thing. But if I close that door, then I'll make that split in a small box, pro nuke or my four frame box, I can close the entrance. Then I'll move them into my air conditioned building for that night and the next night. Okay, so so I always just use a two night rule. And that's partly because, you know, I'm kind of old and forgetful. So 
I can usually remember if I put those bees in there yesterday. And if the answer is no, then I can take them out. So if I remember that I moved those bees in there yesterday, uh, then I better leave them in one more night. Um, I made a mistake in that regard this summer. I had two batches of bees that I was trying to relocate here. I put one batch of bees in on day one. I put another batch of bees in on day two. And on day three, I took the bees out and I moved both batches out. Well, the one batch of bees, of course, flew back and the, the little split that I had made depopulated. So I had to go through other measures to repopulate that and that's a subject for another time. So that's my experience, that two nights will, will uh, allow enough time for the bees to forget where they live if they don't fly for two nights. So they don't fly for night one all day and night two by the next day, they don't remember where they were and they'll reorient to their new spot. So that's uh, a principle that you can use in your apiary when it comes to moving bees short distances. So consolidations, it is. I've got the little, little orange helper out here. I've been moving things around, getting things kind of organized for winter. Um, I, don't, I don't know if I'm gonna make it or not. It's such a mess. And then I've, I've got all my pails and jars set over here. Um, I need to get the tank off the trailer before I pour those into the tank because it's heavy enough. I think I have a plan to get that off of there. My tractor won't lift it, but I have a plan. So we'll see how that plan works out when the time comes. All right, well, here we go, consolidations. I don't think this is gonna be very interesting for you, but you can watch if you want. Now there's a few six frame dead outs here and you know I always talk well I do talk a lot about resources and these six framers are that too bad the colony died and again we'll talk about the whole thing another time the colony died but we have stored syrup here and we have drawn comb. So this is valuable resource, but they're in six frame boxes. I, I want them to be in 10 frame boxes because I want to use my sixes in the spring. And uh, this storage, storage of the frames and the boxes and stuff. exciting stuff. Uh, yeah, what can I say? And it's not looking good. Like there's a few hives here, but but most of them don't look good at all. So we'll see what there is in the spring. I doubt there's going to be much. I'm uh, I'm likely sworn off of Amitraz now. Uh, it didn't didn't work out for me and and uh, it's expensive it's synthetic I don't like it because of that so I'm likely done with Amitraz I have to learn how to use things on Formic Pro uh, oxalic acid vapor I, I got I know how to use that Apolife Var there's another product there it's not super cheap but it's cheaper than Amitraz or Apovar I should say uh, and you know, I think there's some new stuff coming down the pipe. So I sure hope that new stuff is, uh, timely and getting here and, uh, is effective for us and cost effective too. You know, you always have to balance that. 
you're going to charge me, you know, ten thousand dollars to treat my bees one time. <laughs> That's probably not going to happen. I'll just buy new bees because it's a you know cost benefit kind of a thing. Anyway, so that's that's the outdoor work today. And again, I'm off to Winnipeg for deliveries and, and go to the Packer tomorrow. So uh, I won't likely talk to you again before the weekend. So I hope you enjoy the video and have a great weekend. And uh, no matter what, take care and have fun. It's Tuesday, October 20 something today. <laughs> Crap. Uh, 24. <laughs> I think it's the 24th. I have to look at my other phone. <laughs>